Hi, this is Bonnie, and today um, I'm going to be making a spring mushroom card um, using some different colors, and um, and I'm just going to be using um, some bright colors, not so much of the dark colors today. So um, I'm going to show you some of the products I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using Fairy Hugs, and this is um, a um, stencil, 6x6 six six stencil. It's called a net. I am also going to be using some of Fairy Hug stamps. This one is Mortabella. She is in was in the new release, the Mini World release. Um, so is this one? It's called Tiny Mushrooms. You get two in this pack. This one is an uh, an old one, but a goodie, and it is Mini Dancing Mushrooms. This one is called Woodland Mushrooms, and the last one is called Ruffled mushrooms. So those are the ones I'm going to be using and I'm going to be using VersaFine Clear um, ink when I stamp those. But the first thing I'm going to be doing is a background um, with this net and also with a um, circle because I'm going to have the sun over to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and get that together and I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I um, have cut out, as you've known in many of my other videos, I use card stock for my um, suns or moons. And this one happens to be um, three and a quarter inches um, in diameter. And then I'm using a five by seven um, piece of paper um, that is, actually this is a digital paper, so it could react to water if I use any water on it. So I'm going to have this off to the side, and I am using Distress Oxide ink, and I've got two pulled out. I've got the fossilized amber and the mustard seed. I'm going to be using the darker of the two for my halo. Um, simple to do um, to make a halo at any time on paper, and um, that's all I'm going to do is go around this circle because I just want a little bit of a halo for my sun and that's going to be what that looks like and then what I'm going to do is with the um, mustard seed it's a little bit brighter and I'm going to use that for the inside this gives me a space to tell me you know what I need to color in instead of just making a circle um, although that works great too, all you have to do is have use the uh, reverse of your cutout circle and you can have the inner part of your sun. But this works for me because I can just blend that in and add that to it. And I will actually go over a little bit just so that there's it blends in well. So that's going to be very simply, I like to have that center a little bit colored in better, and um, it's going to be my sun. Then the next thing I want to do is I saw a really cool card on Pinterest and I really liked how they had added um, something similar to this Annette across the back here. And I'm just going to do that um, kind of blending it in and I'm going to be using two more um, Distress Oxide. Um, I tried to pick a light and a dark um, in kind of a bright color, so spiced marmalade and, and ripe persimmon. And so I'm going to start with the idea that the sun is shining onto that also, so the darker part will be at the bottom. I'm not going all the way down. It's going to be kind of like a blended look. And um, I'm going to be using my blending brushes. And because I'm going to be stamping down here, I don't mind if it kind of comes to it. Um, but it's going to be soft. It's not going to be really hard. It's going to be kind of like a faded-ish background, not super bright. So like I said, I'm starting with the um, ripe persimmon. I'm also going to keep in mind that I am going to be stamping on top of this also. So. And I want it to gradually get a little bit lighter. 
So, and I'll take a peek at that before I change out, see if it's what I want. Yeah, that's gonna work. And then um, I'm gonna take the Spice Marmalade, same blending brush, and continue going up. I just want a little bit of a interest to the back. I think that works really well. Now what I do want to do, because you can see that was a square, I didn't go all the way over the side because this is six, this is seven. So I'm going to bring this back over here and you can't really, well you can do this, you can flip your thing around and kind of match it up backwards um, and that works too. And I think I will do that. I wasn't sure if I was going to do that. It's not really, it doesn't line up perfectly, but because I'm not making it really dark, it does, and I'm not going to really go over it, it's not going to look off. You see what I mean when I get it. You'll see what I mean. So that now looks like it's continued across. And that works really well. I don't need to put any more up here, I don't believe. I think that looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead, now that I've got my background together, um, I'm going to go ahead and start stamping and get that set up. Okay, I wanted to show you how nicely these can um, be next to each other and fit really um, closely. Um, it wasn't done intentionally when they were made, but I just wanted you to show, see how nicely um, you can put your, your mushrooms, small mushrooms together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, and I am going to do, go ahead and do this one on the end first. And I have no rhyme or reason, other than I picked out a few colors and I'm gonna stamp them. And I think I will add a little bit of color with my Prisma color um, to give it a little bit of dimension afterwards. So for this one, I'm gonna go use, I'm gonna go ahead and use Warm Breeze. Um, it's Versafine Clear. And they usually stamp okay on top of the um, Distress Oxide. I decided I wanted to have a little bit more color than for them to be black. And that is why I'm stamping them in this color. We'll see how it looks. I haven't made this card before, and if I don't like this color, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp black over it. We'll check it out. But I think that's gonna work fine um, with what we wanna do. I do get a little bit of the color from behind anyway, and that works out fine. So we're gonna go with the next one. I'm gonna line that up. And that is going to be, oh, where did I, all of a sudden I, there it is, right in front of me. Um, so that comes next, and you can see how great that is. Now you can overlap them, it's not a big deal, but I thought, why bother when this looks really good? So for this, I'm gonna use Purple Delight, and I'm gonna get that set up. Oops. So it's it's technically a pretty simple card if and if you want to add more details and make it a little bit more, you can. Or you can just leave it without adding the um, extra details from the colored pencils. That's what I usually use is colored pencils. I see that I've put a little bit of ink on my lid that I don't want that to get on my card. I'll wipe that off. And there we go. Like I said, this is a fairly simple card. Um, but it's kind of fun adding the mushrooms. I think I can go ahead and add a little bit more uh, tape down here in the corner so that doesn't move because I but I don't think I need to add uh, more ink to that either. I think that looks really good. That's exactly what they're supposed to look like. I'm gonna pull it up closer to you as soon as I get them all stamped. So you can see the details in the stamps. All right, so our next one will be that one. And it's a little bit more solid, but I can still color over that. And I'm gonna use Charming Pink. Charming Pink for that one. So, Need to put my uh, stamp down first. All right. I'm 
I need to pull my last one off. And there we go. This one's quite bright, but that's okay. We can always tone it down, like I said, with the colored pencils, and that works too. Okay. That works fabulous. All right, and then the last one I'm going to do is the... Um, tiny mushrooms because they fit right there also and I wasn't really sure what color I was going to add to that last one but I think I'm going to go ahead and use uh, I pulled it out thinking like hmm, do I want to use this or not but I think I'm gonna it's gonna be a little bit darker it's not gonna be as bright and that is the bluebell and you know I think that's what we're gonna do so you can see how all of those line up and work really well. Okay. Super pretty. And you can see that one. Okay, so the last one is going to be the um, the fairy. And I wanted her just flying up here towards the sun. Because I think I'm going to probably go ahead, I think I'm going to do it that way. I'm trying to think, I'm going to add a sentiment. I'm pretty sure, and I hadn't figured that one out yet because I wanted to see how this looked before. But the sentiment could always go here also. So, um, I don't think I still want to add a black to this, but um, I think I'm going to actually do, um, I think I'm going to do a gray because I'm going to probably maybe color her in. Well, I'm going to look at my ink and I'll be right back to tell you that what I'm going to do. Okay, so as I'm processing this, I am making decisions about how things are going to fit on and Mortabella is going to go here but that was making a decision based upon where the sentiment's gonna go. And I, because of the sentiment, I decided to add this also to the end. So I had to make sure she was positioned correctly based upon the sentiment. So, and then color-wise, I wasn't really sure either. And I have chosen Monarch totally based upon the fact that uh, she's not a butterfly, but she's a fairy. So I thought maybe that would be cool. So she's not quite black, but she is a dark purple. And it's different than any color I've used on here so far. So it's not really, so it's blending. Let's just put it that way. I think it all works together. Okay, she looks fabulous. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is add the stitched hearts. Oh, I needed to tell you. Um, the ones that I added, this one is sewn hearts. I always call them stitched hearts, but that's sewn hearts. And then the sentiment is, um, oh goodness, I didn't write that down. Well, I'll find that in just a second. Oh, it says it right on it, your wings. It is your wings. So that's what it is. I'm gonna move this a minute because I wanna make sure I don't miss the stamping on those little stitches. And I'm lining up as best I can to make it look like this heart bit is coming from her flying. And I'm gonna use the exact same ink, the Monarch, because it will go together. With the intention, I'm probably going to be coloring in the heart. I really, really like these sewn hearts. They just work so perfectly with the fairies and the butterflies, or the fairies, butterflies, and the bees that we have. So I am, again, going to be using um, the same ink, the Monarch, because I think it goes with the fairy for the sentiment.
And just line that up as best I can to make it straight. And one way you can, if, you're, if your paper is lined up straight, you can really see the grids at the top of here um, to see that if the, they're lined up straight through the grid up here on the lid. Um, as long as your paper is lined up squarely, it should work for you. Um, so let's get that stamped. Move that out of the way would be helpful. Okay. All right, that's great. I was afraid by making it black that it would stand out too much and I wanted it to really blend in with all the colors that were going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off really quick. I'm gonna show you how um, nice the mushrooms have stamped and the fairy. I think we're done stamping. The only thing left to do will be if we're gonna color some of this in so you can see that, but I want you to go ahead and see how nicely they stamp. And you can see the details in those mushrooms, all the little um, the little spots that are in them, the little details. I mean, that is totally um, the details of the the stamp. So and this one was a solid stamp to begin with. So that's really nice. And she looks really nice also. So I'm going to go ahead and um, figure out what else I'm going to do to enhance this, and I'll be right back. The first thing I wanted to do is kind of anchor the bottom of this with a little bit of green. So I have a piece of torn paper that I've used multiple times and I'm just lining up the bottom and I'm gonna use some of my ink. Um, I'm gonna use Mode Lawn. Well, Cause Mode Lawn, I mean, works well, it's green. All right. And there's not much going on down there, so I just wanted a little bit of an anchor for that. And obviously I need to go over a little bit further. And that should work. So that's just as anchoring those a little bit in the background. I can see there's a piece right there that still needs to be anchored. So that works that way. If I wanted more in the background, you know, you can. It's just that once you start adding more ink, you kind of like go over what you've done. So you have to be really careful. And I think I might, um, just to give it a little bit, because I can right there. I'm gonna add a little bit without going over the mushrooms too much. Just a tad. So that's like in the background. I think that works. Okay. So it just looks like there's more to the back than you know what's right there. So that works. And then overall, I like to really ground the outside of the card as well. And to do that, I need to pull out another ink. And um, I know sometimes it makes it look dark, but I'm gonna use Chip Sapphire, um, just because I like how it grounds it. The only thing is, is I just re-inked that, so I'm just hoping that I don't get a great big huge blob. So I'm gonna test that out over here at the side. Yeah. So I don't want too much of that. I just want to ground it a little bit. Probably thinking, why did I put the green? You can still see the green, and it just kind of like blends it all in together.
And again, you can stop at any way along the way. Like say you didn't like the grounding of it, don't add that ink on. You can see what it looks like without it. So the last thing that I will be doing is coloring this in with colored pencils. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my colored pencils so you can see what I do. Okay, so I'm gonna start coloring. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the pencil and I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward it a little bit. Um, and you could slow it down if you wanted to watch it in a, a slower speed. So, cause I'm just gonna go ahead and put some music to this part. Okay, so I got the coloring finished, and basically what I tried to do is I use a, um, a little bit darker color than what the ink is to give it a little bit of highlight. The other thing I tried to do is I use my white gel pen, and sometimes when I go to use a white gel pen, it doesn't want to draw over the pencil, so I might have to go back over that you know, once I get done putting this card together. So I wanted you to see that close up so that you can see what I did do. You can see how I highlighted it and then add a little bit of white. And then the other thing I did is I used the, um, the gold sparkly gel pen and um, added the dots to the inside. You see that part that looks a little bit golden? It's If I tip it, you can see that it's also sparkly. And I did the same to the wings, add the gold to that. Um, and I didn't do much of anything down here other than add a little bit of gold sparkle to the tiniest mushrooms. So then the last thing that I like to do is I have this extreme glitter hologram um, paint. It's just paint. Now if you have anything like, I know there's a lot of pens and things out there that are sparkly. I just like to use this and um, it's water-based, it's acrylic. And I just paint inside of like the wings to get that um, sparkle 
and obviously it never shows up really great in when you're doing it on filming. Um, even sometimes when you take photographs, it doesn't look that great. But to me, to see it for real in real life, I really like that little touch. And I'm going to show you the wings and what I mean. It's drying right now, but you can see that it's all shiny. And then the other thing I like to do is I think that the sun is shining on top of my mushrooms here. So I will add a little bit to the top. Now here's the deal. It is water-based. If it gets mixed up with your gel pen, it can basically take the gel pen color away. Um, so I try not to go over that, the gel pen too much, because they're both water-based um, to start with, I believe. And that's why it takes it away. So like I said, it's almost like having, instead of snow, I think of it as sparkle from the sun. And I just, like I said, just add that to the tops of all of these. Um, it's just, I don't know, I guess I like doing it because it's fun um, to add that little bit extra. And each one gets it. So... I'll finish this up and I will put this uh, card on a card base and I will take a photo of it and that will be at the beginning so you'll know what I will be working on throughout the video. So I hope you have um, enjoyed this process. I enjoyed you stopping by and uh, um, I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful spring because in the U.S. our spring is just starting and um, I hope you have a great day and all of the um, products that I use will be in the description below. Thanks so much for stopping by.